what's up guys, CJR here today, and today I'm going to be uh, fixing and modifying a original, or not original, but uh, Game Boy Color. This one's missing the back, you can see it's in pretty rough condition. Uh, there's actually an issue with the speaker, sometimes these speakers stop working, this one you can just faintly hear. I'm going to replace the speaker and then we're going to do a front light mod on this. So not only are we going to do the front light mod, but we're actually going to apply uh, Loka glue, which will give you an even better picture. So it's a pretty simple mod. This is only my second time doing it. Uh, the first time, I'll show you my how the first one turned out. It actually turned out really well. So uh, things went pretty well. I ran into a couple issues, but uh, with the help of the internet, I uh, got through them. So uh, like I said, I'll quickly, I'll show you how to replace the speaker first, and then we'll get on to the uh, front light modification. Uh, check out the link in the description below. All these parts are available at uh, handheldlegend.com. So. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys some of the stuff I'll be using for this mod. Like I said, this is only my second time doing this mod, so bear with me, I'm not an expert. I just taught myself how to solder uh, a week or two ago, so I'm brand new at this, but it should show you guys an idea of how hard this mod is to do for a, for a beginner. It's actually not that bad. So uh, we've got our Game Boy here. Um, you're gonna need solder your soldering iron, your cleaner if, if you need that, I like to use it. We got a spudger, a tri-wing screwdriver, regular screwdriver, um, just some snips if you've got them. And then we've got our backlight, or sorry, our front light kit from Handheld Legend here. Um, it's got the wires pre-installed, but you will need to solder those to the boards. And then we've got our uh, LOCA glue. LOCA stands for uh, liquid, liquid, liquid oc ocular clear adhesive, liquid, liquid, I think so, something like that. Basically, it's glue that dries uh, through UV rays uh, and it dries completely clear. So uh, you're gonna put a, 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 you're gonna put LOCA glue in between the front light and the actual screen itself it just gives it a better picture with better contrast so our first step here like i said we're going to uh, fix the speaker so we're going to flip the game boy over here i've already done this for time's sake uh, what you're going to do is take your tri-wing screwdriver and remove the six back screws one two three four and then five and six show you a little closer here four up here and two on the inside so i've done that already once you're done that you can Peel the back off, comes off relatively easy. Um, might be a little bit stuck with like gross hand cheese from over the years. Uh, and then on the board, um, you're gonna remove, there's uh, three regular screws, um, non tri wing, I mean by regular. Uh, one, two, and three. You'll see them on there. I already removed them for time's sake. Okay, so first you're gonna want to uh, remove the ribbon cable here. Just a matter of taking your fingernail or a spudger and uh, popping the little clasp up here. You'll feel a little click on either side. And then uh, just sliding out the ribbon cable. This ribbon cable is not too fragile, so you don't have to be super careful, but um, obviously don't just rip it off. That's what the board looks like. So we will set the board aside. Uh, I usually like to get like a lint, um, a lint-free cloth or whatever to set parts on, mostly for the screen. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, use our spudger here. Carefully peel this up and you'll be able to wedge it against the uh, screen carefully. And then usually, it'll pop up relatively easy. Now I would recommend trying your best not to put your fingers on that screen. Try your best not to put any fingerprints or dust on that screen and then uh, just set it aside somewhere where it's gonna be safe, just less, um, less work later. Uh, we're gonna have to apply some glue to that and the last thing you want is dust or glue getting on that screen, so. You can see already here there's a little bit of dust. And just use your compressed air or your uh, lint-free cloth to get that off. You want to make sure uh, the next process here after we fix the speaker is we're going to apply that local glue and you don't want to have anything in between uh, that and the glue because it'll show up when you put the front light on. It'll light up like a Christmas tree. Even the slightest piece of dust will show. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead here and uh, 
attempt to fix the speaker before we do anything else. Okay, so we've got our board and our speaker here. The first thing we're gonna do is desolder these two cables from the speaker. Now, like I said, I am not an expert at soldering here, so go easy on me in the comments below, but this should be a relative, relatively easy task. So what I do is I try and hold the speaker down and then get ready to pry this wire away with my finger once the solder heats up. Now this solder was pretty old, so uh, it can take a while for it to heat up and desolder sometimes. Okay, so that's one. Okay, and we're free. So you can get rid of that old speaker. Uh, if you're like me and this, and you're not an expert at this, you might want to add a little solder. It just makes it easier to connect that wire to if there's a, a little more material on there. All right, I'm getting pretty good at this. Okay, so we've added a nice bead of solder to the right hand side there. Now we're going to do the left. And you just want to touch the existing solder and then feed it, once it heats up, feed in a little bit more. To be honest, soldering is not that hard. It just takes a little practice. What I did was I took apart a PS2 that wasn't working and just practiced soldering and uh, desoldering the board over and over again. I haven't perfected this. I feel like I might need a hotter soldering iron. If it's hot enough, you should be able to just push down on the wire. There we go. Okay, now we're going to do the other side here. Should be able to just line this up and touch the pad down here. There we go. Okay, that should do the trick. You just want to be a little bit careful that you don't uh, break off the connection from the wire here on the little speaker, but it shouldn't give you any problems here. Just kind of bend the wire back in and you're good to go. Uh, okay, so I will test that at the end and if it doesn't work, we'll have to come back to it. Okay, so we can put the board aside and then move on to our application of the uh, loca glue and the front light. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay down a paper towel here. Um, paper towel, you just gotta be careful because there's a little bit of lint and particles. So you wanna make sure your screen is spotless. It's not that hard of a process. You just kinda have to be careful, that's all. There's a little something on there. Okay, that looks perfectly clean. Now this ribbon cable can be a little bit annoying. Uh, it's best to try and keep this as flat as possible, but it's gonna want to, it's gonna tend to want to pop up. Okay, so you can go ahead and open up your front light kit. So it comes pre-wired from Handheld Legend. You don't have to worry about wiring the LED strip to the uh, screen here. And just kind of bend these wires back a little bit. Just be careful that you're not too rough with them because you don't want to lose that connection to the uh, LEDs. Okay, so when the screen is in this orientation here uh, with the ribbon cable at the top, this is how you'll be looking at the, at the screen. You want the red cable on the left, which is the positive, and then the negative on the right, the black cable. So just like that. Um, so what we're actually going to do is apply it uh, face down and then flip it over. That's how I did it last time. That's how I saw to do it. Uh, this will this will not compute is the uh, main source of how I learned to do this on YouTube. So I should give him a shout out. A lot of these techniques I'm uh, borrowing from him. So I don't want to claim any of this as my own. Like I said, this is the uh, this is only the second time I've done this. So. I'm by no means an expert. I just thought I would share the experience with you guys. It's not so much a tutorial as a, uh, just a video of how I do this and how easy it can be for you to do. So you're gonna apply it like this. What, right, uh, red wire on the left, black on the right. So when you do it, you're gonna wanna flip this over when it's face down 
And then you want to take off the uh, screen protector on the back very carefully, not to touch the screen. You do not want to get anything in between the screen and uh, the screen and the and the front light. And then you're going to want to remove this uh, metal or I don't know what this reflective tape. You should be able to just get under there with your nail. You might need to use a blade of some sort. Carefully remove that piece of uh, reflective tape. Trying not to pull the LEDs out. Just go slow. until it's completely off. Now I would recommend just spraying off this screen just to make sure that there's no particles on it. Before you apply the loca, make sure it's good and clean. Once you've made sure that your screens are both spotless and dust free, you can apply the loca to the bottom screen, to the front light, I should say. Uh, so you just get your Loka here. Loka's not too expensive. I got it from the handheld gaming site. I think it was like five dollars and you can do um, I think you can do four of these with one tube four or five depending on how good you are at it Sometimes you need pliers to just uh, Open that If you keep it out of the sunlight, it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't solidify So you want to make sure this is pretty flat so the Loka doesn't run. I know it's kind of tough with those wires and then what you want to do with the loca is you want to try and apply it in an X pattern so there's no space in the middle and so it'll spread properly so it just in an X about like that that's actually probably a little bit too much uh, but the paper towel will handle that so you can put your loca aside and then you're going to want to apply your uh, screen here carefully down. I would kind of hinge it down for less. Um, there's less of a chance of bubbles. And I'm going to go from what your right to left just because I applied it a little awkwardly. And then slowly hinge it down. And let it sit for a minute uh, while gravity does its work. Okay, so after 20 seconds or so, you're going to try and um, carefully raise it and flip it over. Um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. It's kind of upside down here, but uh, it's spread. Um, so it looks like we did a pretty good job here. We've got one minor air bubble here. You can just apply pressure and force them out one of the sides. Okay, so typically what I'll do is remove that tape all the way to the left hand side and then just stick it to one of the wires so it kind of holds it open. That way you don't have to fully remove it and find somewhere to stick it because you're going to want to reapply that after that area has cured in the sunlight. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the um, strip from the other one and do the same thing and let it cure in the sun for another half hour or so just to make sure it's nice and firm. All right, so I'll come back in another 20 minutes or so. Okay, so we're gonna let those dry outside in the sun. It's actually a really nice sunny day. Um, I would recommend doing this when there is at least a little bit of sun. I did my first one on a day that was really cloudy and it took um, hours for it to fully dry. Uh, that was already drying in a matter of minutes in direct sunlight. So I would recommend, I would recommend doing it on a sunny day or at least a day with a little bit of sun, not completely overcast. So uh, while we're waiting for that to dry, I just wanted to mention, I also picked up a bunch of, um, these are original Game Boy, like DMG uh, backlight mod kits. I, I did one so far, it went really well, but I will be posting a video on that also. Um, you can get everything you need there at Handheld Legend. And then he also sells these really cool um, Bivert modules. Bivert, I can't explain the process. Uh, as well as others, I saw a video, uh, Banjo Guy Ollie did a really good video on it. He explained 
the Bivert process. Basically, it um, adds much better contrast to the original DMG Game Boy. And then paired with the backlight, it looks absolutely gorgeous. So I'm actually just waiting for some new shells to come in, then I'll be posting a um, backlit uh, Game Boy DMG um, modification video. So stay tuned for that. So it's now 25 minutes later and we should be good to go. Uh, it's now time to do the soldering. We just need to solder two small points to the, uh, the board here of the Game Boy Color. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we need to solder the red wire. Uh, you can use this top point right here on the left side beside this, uh, I don't know, capacitor, I think that is. <laughs> Uh, you can solder it to this top guy here, and then the black wire to the bottom one. But I did that last time and I actually had issues with this. So I actually moved the red wire over to this guy here. So I'm going to go ahead and solder the red wire to this point here. Okay, so next step is to peel off this foam background here. Uh, with the front light, you're not going to have enough space for this. This will create a little bit more room in the shell. Now you should be able to grab a corner and carefully peel it up in one piece. It's gonna be hard to do this on camera, but you can slowly peel it up and try and get as much off as you can. Okay, so here's what it'll look like when you like, so here's what it looks like when you remove the backing. Uh, just do the best you can to get most of it off. I've had better results on a previous one. It peeled off almost in one piece. This came off in this mess here, so. Just get it off as much as you can. Be careful of the uh, ribbon cable while you're taking it off. All right, so for the next step, we can go ahead and place our newly frontlit screen back into its housing. Now, the next step is up to you. Um, I like to uh, cut two little uh, channels here for these wires to run cleanly through. You can just snip away a little bit of the plastic here. Uh, but it should fit without doing that, but I like to make a little groove there. I usually go to the left of either one of these. You'll see a little mark here on your case. And I just snip out a small section. Just like that. Hopefully you can see that. But now there's a little groove for the wire to fit through. And I should not have set it face down like that. Uh, I try and keep this as clean as possible. Uh, you can, after you install it, before you put the cover on, clean it up a little bit better. So just drop that in. Run your wires through your new grooves here. Um, and then you can kind of route them just out the side for now. Just so they avoid the button wells here. And then speaking of buttons, you can put the contact pads back in now. Contact pads, that's what I call them. First you want to put your buttons in. First you want to add your buttons. The buttons are easy to put back in. They can only go one way. They make it easy for you. This is the IR shield cover. and the power switch. Make sure you put this the right way. It's got a groove. It goes up to the uh, top to the top and right. And then we put our con button contact pads on. These are the things that make contact with the board. Start and select pad. And then now we're ready to uh, place the board back in. So 
it just kind of sits on top. Uh, before you really get it in there, you want to add, you want to uh, put the ribbon cable back in. That's relatively easy. It just kind of slides in until almost all the gold should be um, inside. You'll see a little bit peeking out the top, and then you just want to clamp these guys back down. You want to make sure your speaker is tucked in. Now these wires, I like to, um, I like to stick it in this little cartridge well here. Again, I learned this from uh, this will not compute on YouTube. This is how he did it, and this is how I'm going to do it because it worked out pretty well for me the first time. So you just kind of run this black wire through here. Try and get as much slack as you can because it's got to run all the way over to this point here. So. You might need to lift your board and make sure that the wire is not snagged on anything. We look pretty good here. Just enough slack to make it over there. Might actually have to run this one through here, which is fine, as long as you keep it flat to the board. You can use a piece of tape to tape it down. Just make sure that you avoid all the screw holes here. And then this guy, we'll do the same thing on the other side. It's just a good way to avoid hitting anything. Okay, now we are ready to solder the black wire to this point down here. Uh, black wire is going to this point at the bottom on the left side, the fourth one down. And then as I said, we're going to put the red up here on this point. Uh, I like to not... <laughs> I'm not going to cut any off in case I make a mistake and I have to cut it back later. I'll just solder it as is and try and route the cable somewhere. Now these wires are pre-tinned so you don't have to... Now you shouldn't have to worry about tinning these wires. As long as you've added a little bit of solder to the point, you should be good to go, hopefully. I get this on the first try. Okay. Okay guys, a bit of a change of a plan. Um, after some help from the internet, specifically somebody on Instagram, um, I was instructed not to use this uh, top pillar or top post on the right hand side and to move it back to the left side. Uh, apparently that's the five volt post. And then to install a 47, 47 ohm resistor. This is all new to me. So I'm going to solder one end of the resistor to the red wire and then put it put the other end back onto that um, top post on the left hand side. Okay, so I've uh, snipped the end of the resistor. Now I use my little arm contraption here to hold the resistor. This is how I do it. I don't know if this is the way it should be done, but I'm still learning, so we heat up from underneath and hopefully be able to get this relatively easy. There we go. Pretty happy with that. That's one end connected. And then, like I said, the other end we are going to connect to that top left-hand side. Okay, so we've got it on. Just try and route the resistor so it bypasses the screw holes as best as possible. So I'm gonna put in one screw here just to keep the board secure. Uh, probably should have done this before doing the soldering just so it doesn't move around on you, but it's completely up to you. I like to hold it on an angle a little bit because the buttons, if you press the buttons, they'll push on the board and you won't be able to screw it in properly. So I'm just going to put one screw in here and then we'll, uh, we'll put the back on and that's set the right hole. Yeah. Let's hold it in here. Okay, it's not quite fitting yet. Um, there's an issue up here, but we it should be good enough to test. So 
So let's go ahead and put some batteries in here and see if it works. Crossing my fingers right now. We're in a game here. And here goes nothing. All right, it's working. And it looks like we did a good, pretty good job on the Loka. So I'm gonna finish this up here and we'll take a closer look. Now that we know that the Game Boy is working and the front light mod was a success, we can go ahead and close up the Game Boy. Make sure that you use a relatively large screwdriver when screwing these in. I've had issues with smaller screwdrivers with these uh, screws from the replacement cases um, stripping relatively easily. It can be a little tough to get them in sometimes. All right, so I just ran into a bit of a problem with this case. Um, I ordered this case from AliExpress. This is not from Handheld Legend. Um, I cheaped out. <laughs> uh, basically what happened was the screws that came with this case, I don't know why, but the previous cases I used and the one I'm about to use um, didn't have this problem, but all the screws in this case uh, were all the same size. So what happened was when I went to screw them through, I flipped it over and the screw had punctured the outside of the case. So you can see those white marks there where the screws almost came all the way through. So essentially I just ruined this case. So I'm gonna have to use a different case. That is my mistake. Um, it's actually the seller from AliExpress. Um, when you're doing this, when you take the, the uh, Game Boy apart, you'll notice that the screws that are attached directly to the board are slightly shorter than the ones that go through um, the case. So when you're taking off those three screws from the back of the board on these three spots here, Make sure when you put it back to use the appropriate screws that go in there. If you're doing a case replacement, I would recommend actually using the original screws because they're much better. And um, I find that the ones that come with these kits easily become uh, de-threaded and you can uh, ruin the screw and, and you can't get it off again. So uh, I would recommend using the original screws. Anyways, we are now going to put it into this orange case. Okay, I have the housing on. So I actually decided to do something a little different because the red case got destroyed, the front piece, I decided to put the back red piece onto my existing, my first attempt at this mod, actually not attempt, it went really well, um, on the Mario edition. So I decided to go with the red and then the black battery cover. I'm probably gonna actually do this. I think this looks a bit better with just a straight red in this case. So we got red and black Mario edition. And then I took the black back that was on this one and I decided to make it to put it with the orange one that we just did. So here's the orange and black and then I got black on the back with the orange battery cover. I'm not sure if I like the black or the bat, the black or the orange, but you can see we got black buttons, almost like a Halloween version. Now, I haven't decided whether I'm going to go with a uh, Pokemon screen like that. I think I may actually keep this one for myself. I like it so much, so I might actually put a glass screen on that. Okay guys, so here we have the finished product. I went with the black buttons, orange front, just the regular glass um, cover for now. And then here's the back. I'm going with the orange. Got the sticker on the back with the black. I think it looks really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on here. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. Not quite as good as the first one I did. There is that little tiny speck on the screen, but uh, it still ended up really nice. I still have the plastic. You can see the, there's some scrapes on here. That's just the plastic film. I'm not gonna remove that quite yet, but um, yeah, that's the finished product. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my first mod video. Like I said, I'm brand new at this stuff, but uh, I feel like they went pretty well. Um, it just kind of shows you that even if you're a complete noob at soldering, um, you can do this mod with just a little bit of time and patience. I'm really happy with the way that both of them turned out, and I've actually just started working on a third. So now I have an important announcement. I'm actually gonna be doing a giveaway of one of the um, modded Game Boys that you just saw me create. So uh, I'm gonna do an official giveaway video coming this Saturday. Um, if you're seeing this now, it's probably Thursday. So on Saturday, I'll be doing my giveaway video, but you can go ahead and actually um, 
kind of pre-enter. All you need to do is be a subscriber on YouTube and then you can get another entry by just following me on Instagram. I'll leave the link to my Instagram in the description below. It's just CJR, you can just search CJR on Instagram and uh, you'll get two entries. I'll be picking uh, finalists from YouTube and then Instagram. You can get your name in there twice for um, YouTube or Instagram. I'll be randomly picking from both, so. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly show you guys what you will be able to win here. You'll get your choice of either the Mario Focus with the red back, the, I'm, gonna, I'm calling this the Halloween version, the orange with black and orange back. This is my personal favorite. And then I'm actually just working on another one here. Uh, this is a clear. I'm probably gonna go clear. I have pink at the back right now. I'm not sure how much I like it. I'm probably gonna switch that to black and then go with a Pokemon screen. So you'll have your choice between those three. Like I said, I will post the actual contest video on Saturday morning and I'll be throwing in some other stuff in there too. But the winner will be able to pick one of the three. So like I said, all you need to do is be a subscriber and um, follow me on Instagram for another chance to win. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do me a big favor and hit the like button. See you guys.